Today I'll be showing you how I store my calendar events in the cloud for free using Nextcloud and sync them with my device. I did a video previously where I covered how to store your contacts in the cloud using a similar method. I would suggest starting with that video, or not, up to you. I will cover everything you need to know in this video if you just want to store your calendar events. So the first step in this process is to sign up for an account with a free Nextcloud provider. As I mentioned earlier, I did do a video on this previously on how to set up your contacts in the cloud. And in that video, we also created a Nextcloud account. You don't need to create a whole separate account. You can use the same one. So if you did follow along in that video and you already have an account, feel free to use the timestamps down below to skip this part. I'll also leave a link down below in the description with links to all the sites referenced in this video. So if you don't want to type them out, you can just go there and click them. So the first thing we have to do when we get to nextcloud.com, hover over get nextcloud, go down to sign up now and click that. Once the page loads, go ahead and click change provider. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom quick. There is a disclaimer down here where they state how they have done their best to pick a good provider. I just want to reiterate that disclaimer down below. Review these providers, see which one works best for you, check out their privacy policies. I'm just picking a random one to use as an example in this video, but do your own research and choose the best one for you. So with that out of the way, let's scroll back up. For this video, I'm going to be using the Ops One provider based out of Zurich. So we're going to select that. You do need to enter a valid email address in this box. They're going to send you a confirmation email. If you don't confirm your account, it's disabled after six to nine hours. So if you want to use this long term, make sure you enter a valid email address that can receive emails. Once you fill that out, check the I agree box. Optionally subscribe to the newsletter, then click sign up. Once that completes, you will be redirected to this screen where you're going to set your password. Again, here's a disclaimer, you will receive a mail to verify your account within six hours, otherwise it will be deactivated. Go ahead and set your password. Once you type that out, go ahead and click login. So at this point, we have successfully created our Nextcloud account. Nextcloud can do more than just store calendar and contact events. It can store files, photos, all sorts of different things. So take a look around. Check it out, it's some amazing free open source software. The next step is to now upload our calendar events to Nextcloud. So for that, we're gonna go ahead and close out of this initial presentation. We're gonna go up to the top, select calendar. I'm going to be importing my calendar events from an ICS file. Random fact, the ICS extension on the file stands for Internet Calendar Scheduling. Wherever you currently have your calendar events stored, Gmail, iCloud, a similar provider, you should be able to export them in this format or a similar format that can be imported to Nextcloud. I will leave links down below in the description for popular providers such as Gmail or iCloud on how to export your calendar events in a format that can be used in Nextcloud. But even if you don't have the export a file ready for import, go ahead and just create a test calendar event. I'll do that in a moment and you can still follow along and get everything set up on your device until you have that export. So if you do have an ICS file or something similar ready to import, Go ahead and click settings and import from there import calendar go to where that file is stored in my case personal.ics click open just confirms where you're importing it to importing to the personal calendar click import calendar and we can see four events were imported like i mentioned if you don't have that file ready go ahead and just create a test event so i'm going to click new event this is a test click save and we can see that showed up over here I'm just going to throw it on the 17th one other thing i do want to mention we are using a free plan on this provider and with anything free it could go away tomorrow so always keep a local backup on your machine just in case something happens with that free plan another alternate would be to buy a paid plan through one of these providers and usually that comes with some sort of service level agreement so now that we have our calendar events imported to Nextcloud, the next step is to set up syncing on our device. So to set up syncing on our device, we're going to be using two different open source apps. The first one is DevX5, and that's going to be used to actually sync with our Nextcloud account. And the next one is going to be Simple Calendar Pro, and that'll be used to actually display the data on our device. So the first app we need to download is DevX5, so we're going to swipe up. I'm going to go into F-Droid, search for DabX5. Once you get there, click on install. 
And while we're here, let's go back and download Simple Calendar Pro. So search for that. Once you get that open, go ahead and click install. And we can swipe up and go back to our home screen. So now that the two apps are installed, the first thing we're going to do is configure DevX5 to sync with Nextcloud. Let's open DevX5. Let's walk through the initial setup. Next. As I mentioned, Nextcloud does support more than just calendar events and contacts. There's another option to use it with tasks. I'm not going to be covering that in this video, so I'm going to check I don't need task support. Next. So in this video, we're demonstrating how to configure calendar events. So we do need to enable calendar permissions. Select that and then click allow. Next. Regular sync intervals. It's recommended to leave this enabled. Click allow, but that is up to you. Click next. This last screen just mentions how this is open source software. So if you do have the means and can contribute, I would suggest it if you use the software and provides value to you. Go ahead and click the check mark. And we have now completed the initial setup. So the next step is to click the big orange circle in the bottom right hand corner. Go down to advanced login. The first option here for base URL, we're going to go back to our web browser and whatever provider you signed up with, this URL here, that's what we're going to type in that box. That might vary for you if you didn't select ops one. If you did, it should be something similar. So go ahead and type that in that box. We are using a username and password to authenticate, so check that box as well. Type in the username or the email that you used to sign up with for the account. And once you type that in, go to the password box and enter the password that you configured. Click the check mark. Double check the base URL and the username is correct and then click login. So if you are successful, this next screen will show up for creating an account. This is just for creating an account locally in DevX5. This is not creating an account anywhere else. The little paragraph down below explains a little bit more that whatever account name you use in this box is what will be used as the organizer field for events you create. So I would suggest leaving this your email or change it to whatever else you want. So once you confirm that, go ahead and click create account. So on this next screen, we can now see that we are on the card dev tab. That's for contacts, but in this video, we're talking about calendar events. So go to the cal dev tab. So here we can see the personal calendar we have from Nextcloud. Go ahead and check that and then click the orange sync button in the bottom right hand corner. And now that we have that completed, the next step is to configure Simple Calendar Pro. So once the syncing has finished, go ahead and swipe up, go back to your home screen, and now let's open the Simple Calendar Pro app. So inside here, we're gonna go click the three dots in the upper right hand corner, go into settings. So once you're in the settings, we're gonna scroll down Here's the section for CalDev, CalDev Sync. Enable that. Allow permission to your calendar. We can see here, again, here's the personal calendar. That's the one we want to sync. If you had multiple calendars, you would see multiple calendars listed there. Once you select that, click OK. If you do add other calendars in the future, you can go into Manage Sync Calendars and select the other ones that you add. And now we're going to scroll back up to the top and go into Manage Event Types. So Simple Calendar Pro comes with a default calendar called a regular event. You cannot delete this as it's the default calendar. This could cause you some trouble, so I'm gonna show in the next step what to watch out for and keep in mind when creating events. So let's go back, let's go back to the calendar. So now back on the calendar screen, we can see that everything did sync up as expected. If we compare this to the web browser calendar, we can see all four events there, all five events there that we created. So the last thing we want to do is test creating a calendar event. And this is what I mentioned about the two different calendars on the device where this could cause trouble. So go ahead and click the orange plus in the bottom right hand corner, select event, name it whatever you want. And we're going to scroll down to the bottom and we need to confirm that the personal calendar is selected. If we have the store locally only, that's where it's going to store it on the local calendar on the phone. It'll not sync with Nextcloud, and that would not be good. I have found that when it is selected once, the default then is to use that same calendar in the future. So as long as you make sure it's selected once, you should be good to go. But if you do run into trouble and wonder why you're not seeing your events in the web browser, more than likely it's because you created the event with store locally only selected. So once we confirm that's selected, go ahead and click the check mark. This is just about reminders, making sure that everything is set up correctly on your device if you have it for a calendar event. 
I'm just gonna click okay. And that has now been created. Let's jump back to the web browser, click the refresh button. And we can now see, here's that event for another test that we just created on our phone. Everything seems to be set up correctly and syncing as expected. Again, I would suggest creating, deleting, editing events, making sure everything works as expected before you fully rely on this method.